Hi, this is Eric, and we're going to look at a new series today about Aurelia. We're going to create a really simple application, but to begin with, let's go ahead and just create the basic application and start with a header. And to do that, we're going to use custom elements. Now, you can use custom elements in your Aurelia application a lot of different ways. One of it is you can do it without the view model. So you can see here there's the secret message.js and then there's the HTML. HTML is considered the view, what everyone sees, and the JS or the JavaScript is the view model. So we have, in my previous video, if you haven't checked it out, I have a video on Aurelia CLI. I'll link it up into the show notes below. But I went ahead and created a basic application that didn't really do much using uh, the Aurelia CLI. So I have it running here. So I just created it. There's nothing here. So if I go AU run dash watch, It'll load up. And if we look here, we'll go localhost 9000. Yep, there's my hello world. Nothing too exciting about that. So I'm using Tmux here. I'm going to go ahead and switch to a different window. That's just a screen emulator or multiplexer, I guess you could call it. I'm going to load up Vim, VI Improved, and we'll actually do this. I'm going to go into another prod, and I'm going to load up Vim, and we can see our source here. If we go to H our app, JS file, we'll say, we'll just call this new program. Make sure everything's working. I'm going to save it. Looks like it auto reloaded like we expected, so it seems to be working. So, in a basic application, we can create, we can kind of model our application a lot of different ways, but what we want to do is we want to contain all our header information in one file, and then we're also going to have um, a few other components to our application. So, but let's go ahead and bring up a, I'm going to go ahead and switch screens here. And I'm going to run AU, and we're going to generate element, element, header. All right, so it created header. So now I'm back here. Now when it creates a header, this is the directory structure. You can see that there's a Relia project, node modules, scripts, source. So we're going to look at resources. And we're going to look at elements, and you can see now we have a header and a header JS file. So there's really nothing in here for our custom element that we just created. Now this is the view model. We're not going to actually use this right now, but we'll just leave it there. So we're going to go back to the app.html file, and we're now we're going to go ahead and include it so we can use it in our application. So to do that, we just need to add a require. And if we add the require here, I went ahead and just copy and pasted it, but basically do require from equal. And then since we have all these directories, we have to put we have to uh, put in the exact directory structure where it's located at. So we do resources slash elements slash header. And this is using the normal custom element. Now we just run it like this, header. We actually have our own tag now. And just to make sure it's working, let's change this value well let's do this let's just put in high from custom element right here we'll save it yep high from custom element so definitely loaded which is good and we'll add this after the message just to be consistent there all right so now our custom elements in place which is perfect now uh, we wanted to use we're just going to go really simple, meaning we're going to use Bootstrap to get everything running. Now, there's a lot of ways we can add Bootstrap to our application. We can just use a CDN and then point our sources in the header or in our app HTML, h.htm to them. But let's, this is probably more of the preferred way. So I'm going to do npm install bootstrap dash dash save. And then this should install Bootstrap.
Great. All right, so let's take a look here. And just for good measure, we'll install, well, let's just leave it like that. Now, if you take a look at the node modules folder, you'll notice a lot of stuff's installed. And if you look at Bootstrap, this is kind of the directory st structure we're looking at. This here, another prog, node modules, Bootstrap. But if we go into dist, fonts, Here's the fonts are at. If you go into CSS, here's our CSS. So we want to include our CSS in our application. So to do that, we're going to go ahead and go to the Relay project and go to Relay.json. And here, if you look down, this is kind of the basics of how everything's set up. If you look, there's Relay.json is actually imported in um, elsewhere in the program. I don't remember if it's in the main.json. No, it's not main.json. And the package. I'm not sure where, but it definitely is imported in. One more thing we can do, we have this dependencies here. And so we want to go and tell it to use, uh, to add bootstrap. Now, we could always inside our program itself in the app.html we could just require it and then put the exact location which means it would be something like this require from dot dot slash dot dot slash dot dot slash until you got to known module and then you just keep going but that's a big pain and not necessarily the right way to do it so we're going to go back to Aurelia, JSON, and we're just going to take a new one here, and we're going to add a few things in. Oops. Let me make it look a little nicer. Okay. So what we did here is add jQuery. Now we're going to add a new module. Now, this depends on how you have, um, what kind of modules, what kind of dependencies you're importing. If they're AMD, it actually may be easier to import it for bootstrapped. Bootstrap, you have to kind of do it this way. So you name it. So jQuery, you add it right here. You have the name, the path to where it's at, the where the main is, jQuery. Uh, it depends, has a dependency on jQuery exports and then exactly where the bootstrap is. So we'll head and go ahead and save that. And now what we can do is we can put this in our header. And we'll take a look at it to see if it's still working. Uh-oh, so what's there's a problem. We couldn't find our header. Just one sec. Oops, I uh, forgot to install jQuery. So we go npm install jQuery dash save. Some reason it wasn't working right. Okay, now we're gonna, our server, I have to start it again. Make sure it starts up okay. All right, now let's see it save everything. Let's see if it works. Still one sec. Oops, found the problem. So if we look back at Aurelia.json file, we have min.css, and here I just have bootjust.css. I'll do .min.css, save it. Okay, came up. So now we are using Bootstrap in our application. So we'll go back to our header file here. 
and we don't really need this value. So what we'll do is we'll copy and paste some really basic bootstrap code. And we're gonna have a nav bar and we're gonna take a look at it. All right, so here it is. So now it loaded correctly. So last thing we wanna do before we end this video is we were talking about having a view and a view model and we can actually, if we go into our app.htm file, you notice here I did header. So really, this is this is using the custom element. It's using both the view and the view model. But we can have a, we can just do view only without the view model by doing .html here. And if we look at our program, it's still the same as we expect. But now you're thinking, well, we can also, how do we get? If we want to do some basic, we want to pass some certain values to it. So what we could do is if we go back to the HTML file here and we look at the header, we could do something like this, message.bind equals message. And then inside the header.html file, we add in bindable equals message. Now we have access to that message, so we can do something like this. And we save it. Now, see the new program, the name is passed on to the, the template, the view, the view that is. And you can see that that's working by going into here and we can call this my new website. You can see they both changed and you can see my new websites right here too. So that's definitely working. Now that's just a really quick overview of how to do uh, custom elements. Obviously, if we really wanted to look into more, we need to talk about binding, uh, bindable. We'll talk about that in the next episode. Thanks. And if you have any questions, leave a comment below. And feel free to share this, uh, and that'd be great. Thanks.